Hello and welcome to ACTV. This is Romi Hib. In support of the Gaza resistance against the Israeli aggression, tens of AC students participated in a stand that took place at Four Palms last Monday during the assembly hour. The angry students carried the Palestinian flags and shouted anti-Israeli slogans. It was organized by the Student Union alongside the AUC Student Rights Coalition and AUC Political Science Association. AC students were triggered after watching the Israeli security forces assassinate a senior Islamic Jihadi commander in Gaza on November 12th. This sparked two days of intense rockets resulting in the deaths of 34 Palestinians, including eight children and three women. Throughout the stand, some students were black in grievance of the loss of civilian lives. Others prayed for Palestinians who had lost their homes, children and their lovers of the recent Gaza attack. Being on a campus that allows us to mobilize and assemble and it is something that we cannot do in the country anymore and we, in very limited capacity we have, we wish to raise awareness for students and whoever that comes across this on any platform, be it on the internet, on social media or if even by word of mouth, we show solidarity, we show resistance. This is an exhibition of students coming together, mobilizing and exhibiting Students are currently discussing further actions they could take to show their solidarity with Gaza. The organizers suggested some steps, such as raising awareness about the Palestinian cause, advocating for a boycott of countries helping Israel, and beginning a donation campaign. Social media expert Fedi Romzi was invited to talk to AUC students about social media usage in higher education. Dr. Romzi ha has been working in the media field for decades. Being specialized in e-marketing and online journalism, he gave several speeches on social media in regional as well as international conferences. During the event, he discussed the correlation between the use of different media outlets, such as Facebook and Instagram, and the fulfillment of academic purposes. He found that students are more encouraged to complete their assignments and projects when they are allowed to use media platforms. In addition, the speaker gave some valuable tips for learners who plan to work in the field. He mentioned that creativity and originality of ideas are a must. Moreover, he advised students to take advantage of the services provided by the internet in order to become successful marketers. Uh, today we're talking about the best practices and usage for social media from the higher education perspective. And today we talk from three angles. First angle was for the university. What can universities do over social media? And we saw several examples about the best practice and usage for social media, whether for the freshmen, people entering the university, whether promoting the university campus and life at the university, uh, for promoting events, happenings, news, uh, for sharing the experience of alumni, different angles and different uh, perspectives for the usage of the university. This was the first topic. Second topic was inside the classroom, what can be done, or how can we best utilize the social media, for example, uh, personal branding over uh, LinkedIn was one of the very effective tools that uh, I used in my class and the students, I would say lots of my students, they got uh, headhunted and they got several job offerings because they worked well and they uh, made their profiles over LinkedIn really professional and really shining. Uh, also outside the classroom, what are the tools and the best practices that we could use, like the Facebook Live, Facebook Groups, etc., for remote communication and remote collaboration outside of the classroom. So basically, these were the three angles that we uh, discussed. Finally, Dr. Ramzi adopted a practical approach and urged students to make use of social media in their class projects, like polls, surveys and live tweeting, planning creation and distribution, as he said. Volunteers have been hard at work for months with the Department of the Arts, Graphic Design Program and the Office of Sustainability to put together this year's Christmas tree, made entirely of recycled materials. The Office of Sustainability provided the Graphic Design Program with the recycled materials needed, while the Graphic Design Program created a design sufficient to be applied to creating the holiday tree. It is a very celebrative event and we kind of want to use it to bring the community together. Recycling workers at AUC collected and washed 10,000 empty bottles that have been discarded throughout the university. Volunteers then painted the bottles and arranged them in the shape of a Christmas tree. As Christmas is known to be a collaborative event, more than 2,000 AUC students volunteer and collaborated together to make the decorative tree. The graphic design program decided to make use of this process to bring the AUC community together. The tree is displayed in front of the library for the, for the students to festive their moments on campus and to remind them 
to be responsible for their environment. The motive behind creating the tree was making use of everyday materials in producing a decorative item through the painting, through painting the 10,000 recycled bottles with diversified uh, vibrant colors, the AC community succeeded in making a handmade Christmas tree. AUC's Interfaith and Interculture Initiative celebrated the Japanese anime art in a special event called Anime Building Bridges. Uh, Bridges. Anime is a style of Japanese film and television animation typically aimed at adults as well as children. It's less about bringing cultures together and more having people celebrate the culture together. The culture that they've created in Egypt as part of the anime community. It's less of like bringing something that's foreign, it feels more like this is, this is home for a lot of people. Because they find themselves in anime and they find themselves in costumes and they find themselves in cosplay. So we didn't want to celebrate that. Students were invited to come in their best anime-related cosplays for a chance to win a manga with the advantage of asking professional cosplay artists and having many props to choose of. Attendees enjoyed singing their favorite anime openings, ate sushi and won souvenirs. The event had famous anime soundtracks playing throughout the event, adding to the atmosphere of the whole event. Now, this was all for today. Now moving on to, our, to the interview segment. Hello and welcome to our interview segment. With us today, a triathlete currently training to compete in the Tokyo Olympics and was also in the Chinese Olympics. He also is part of the Heliopolis team of triathletes and the national team. Welcome, Khalid. Welcome. How are you? Good. So let me ask you, uh, what made you choose to be a triathlete? I chose to be a triathlete when I was like 14 years old. Because uh, I, I used to do swimming and I found it so boring, like doing hard sessions every day, morning and go to the pool every day. So I need to change in my life. And, sp and sports was like a part of my life. So uh, I just need a change. And that's why I transition. I made a transition to triathlon. Mm -hmm. OK. And how's the transition so far? Uh, it's really so good. Like it's really it's really like fantastic. I really love like every day going to the session, different session. It makes you like have a different kind of working with your muscles uh, mm -hmm. it's like it's a good lifestyle like even there's a lot of people doing it with and they're not even in highly competitive uh, level okay i see i see so you told me that you competed in the chinese olympics yeah how was that uh, it was really good i i went there when i was like 17 years old wow 16. so it was a changing life experience yeah uh, it's different when you go to the Olympic Village and so different people from different delegations and get to interact with different culture and see like heroes uh, there because there are some ambassadors come like Michael Jordan, uh, Michael Phillips, all these people. Mm. So when you see these people like this is an aspiring uh, idols and you want to be like them. So it was like a game changing in my life. Mm. Do you have uh, like an idol within uh, Egyptian athletes? Uh, not really, but I have uh, idols in my uh, my sports outside mm. Egypt. Oh, I see, like triathlete, yeah, uh, triathletes, uh, international yeah, athletes, yeah, yeah. international athletes. Okay, I see, I see. So how was the transition from like uh, being just a swimmer to like uh, being a triathlete, which includes about cycling and running and so forth? Um, it's more like it's more hectic and mm. it's more muscles doing, but at the same time. It gives you a factual feeling when you finish your sessions and you finish your race to give like satisfaction. This pain satisfaction we all have, even in your job, in your sports. So mm. I really enjoyed it more than swimming because it was like routine swimming because you go do every day and somehow it's repetitive mm -hmm. and it's no change. So going to a different cycling and enjoying outdoors, especially in cycling when you go outdoors, it's really nice, especially when you travel and go some sea landscape and some sceneries. Mm -hmm. So it's really very nice. And also same for running when you go and run and it's like you unleash your uh, your potential and unleash your energy. I see, I see. So how are you training currently for like the Tokyo Olympics? Uh, my schedule of training, I, I always swim five uh, five times a week. Mm. Uh, Fridays are, are off days mm. and Saturdays mm, we go days. outdoor for cycling and the rest of the week we do indoors. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like you put your bike fixed on a, something called home trainer 
and it's currently connected to the Bluetooth, so you can see yourself while you're cycling. Uh, oh, it's a yeah, it's a visual uh, gaming. It's called Gold Swift. And uh, running, you go sometimes indoors or outdoors. It depends on the weather. So right. if the weather is good, you go outside in the morning, go for a run before uni or something. Or mm. uh, if you if you if you miss this, you can go indoors uh, here in university. Yeah. You told me before the show that like uh, you're also a business uh, with a finance uh, yeah. concentration major. Yeah. So how do you balance all of this business non easy yeah, yeah, especially I, finance? Yeah, I I, ha I had I had and I acquired this uh, this time management thing when I was young because mm -hmm. I used to go from school and finish school and go to training. Oh, I training, finish training mm -hmm. and go finish my assignments. So I, yeah, I'm try I try to utilize every one hour in in my in my day. So I can, f so I can get my stuff done, and yeah, there is no s much social life, but still there is a social life, mm. which I'm kind of blessed with it. But yeah, still like you have to squeeze all your schedule in the day to get all the things you done, especially in the deadlines and the exams and final exams. Right, right. Uh, well, sadly, Khaled, this was all the time that we had today. Uh, thank you for coming. Uh, this was uh, our interview segment for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye.